Brian, and I'm going to start passing off the mic to my teammates. The core conference team is up here, and I just want everyone to introduce themselves, and we're going to move pretty quickly through a lot of the core conference programming elements. And, uh, and then we're going to send you off on your merry way to start your sessions. Okay, here we go. Hi, I'm Gus Schulenberg. I'm the Director of Communications and Community Engagement. Hi, my name is Elena Chang. I'm the Associate Director of Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion. I'm Hannah Fenlon. I'm the Associate Director of Conferences and Fieldwide Learning. And I'm Natalie Stringer, the Conferences Associate. Welcome. <laughs> We also have some old conference friends with us, um, and I believe, Ty, this is your cue. Would you like to come up and introduce yourself and lead us in one moment? Um, we just like to take this moment to honor the indigenous people of the land here in the Washington, D.C. area. I want to say that I'm humbled to speak on elders' behalf as well as the local uh, D.C. area folks of the Pamunkey Nation, Paskatawe, the Cherokee people, and the Iroquois people, all of the Algonquian-speaking languages, who for many years, many, many centuries, have traded stories and songs and art from the Chesapeake Bay along the Potomac River. So it's a great honor that we're here in their lands of Turtle Island having the conference of a theater nation. So miigwech ahu. Uh, thank you, Ty. And uh, just to go over a couple of the goals of why we're here together, we're going to do two things. We're going to let you know all the different ways that you can engage with the conference programming with a bunch of exciting cameos from your fellow attendees. <laughs> and we are going to lay the groundwork for building a shared analysis of our At the Intersections arc. Those are the two things that we're going to do in our time together. And it's important that we came together as a conference first before we all split up on our merry ways. So now I'm going to turn it over to Hannah to explain why that's so important. Um, so one of the reasons why that is so important is because, um, as you know, if you've been here in past years, the conference is both professional and deeply, deeply personal. Um, increasingly, we're asking attendees to not just bring their professional, but also their personal selves to the conference. And we need to provide support on how to navigate that balance. And by provide support, I sort of mean give yourselves time and space. Take the time that you need, ask questions of the conference team, and give each other a little bit of space and support as we move through these three days together. And I'm going to pass it off to Devin to talk a little bit more about the goals of the conference. Okay, some of our overall goals of Theater Nation. You're in Washington, D.C. in an election year. Uh, the theme of the conference is Theater Nation. And in 1984 at the conference, Robert Wilson said, uh, theater people from different countries make up a kind of united nation, a theater of nations. And believe it or not, we found that quote after we had named the conference. <laughs> Just, you know, works out that way. If that's true, uh, how can we use our time together to work toward a more perfect union? Can we imagine a theater nation whose borders are not bound by walls, but opened through affinities of creative practice? Can we create a theater nation that welcomes everyone who shares those affinities and equitably represents them? That's one of our big goals for our time together. And some of our other goals include uh, skills building, networking and knowledge exchange for your professional development, uh, social gatherings, fun and affinity groups for personal connection, uh, getting to know Washington, D.C. and the awesome theater community, the, the very large awesome theater community here who have been great hosts to us, and um, engaging with your democracy through opportunities like the Hill Visits today, and uh, to see some theater. So um, that's why you're here, in case you weren't clear on that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to pass it over to Elena to, um, to talk about uh, 
or to lead us in a turn and talk. Elena, where'd you go? Oh, Elena. Hi, how's everyone doing? <laughs> All right, so uh, we just started and we would like to do a little activity. Uh, speed dating, if you will. Uh, just kidding. It's actually going to be a 30 second find someone that you don't know and introduce yourself and um, share something that you're really looking forward to here at the conference. And we're going to do two rounds of this. So the next 30 seconds, we're just going to find someone we don't know. And uh, I'm going to give you one minute to chat it up. <laughs> and then I'm going to say, eh, next person. Here we go. All right, all right. If you hear my voice, clap once. If you hear my voice, clap twice. Are we going to the club? Okay. Uh, I'm noticing already folks are meeting in pairs and, and three, three people at a time. Uh, the next minute, we're going to find someone else or two more people or three more people. Anyway, you have one more minute. Here we go. All right, if you hear my voice, clap once. If you hear my voice, clap twice. If you hear my voice three times, just, just don't clap and come back together, yeah. All right, uh, so we're gonna continue on. I'm gonna take a moment now. Uh, I'd like to bring up Hannah Fenley and Salma Zodi to tell us a little bit about why we are an inclusive theater nation. Thank you, Elena. 
Um, so my friend Salma is going to come up here with me and contribute some of this. But um, yeah, we are an inclusive theater nation, and we're psyched about it. Uh, we're so eager to welcome colleagues and collaborators of every sort imaginable here in Theater Nation. And Salma and I are going to outline some of the ways we've tried to make our space uh, a more inclusive one during our time together this week. Um, so first of all, you may have noticed there are four all-gender restrooms, um, yeah. two on this floor. Yeah. Two, two on this floor and two on the floor above, right sort of nearish the registration and then right off the uh, escalators upstairs. And if you're wondering who those restrooms are for, they're for you. <laughs> they're for you. Um, you'll also notice, you've probably noticed our friends Brittany and Laura. Brittany and Laura, can you wave, please? Sorry, Brittany. <laughs> um, so Brittany and Laura are part of a cohort uh, of ASL interpreters who will be supporting our incredible deaf colleagues throughout the conference. Um, if you didn't know, if you didn't know, DC is the home of Gallaudet University, which is the world's only institution of higher education devoted to deaf and hard of hearing students. Um, and the city has a robust community of deaf artists. Uh, for folks watching at home, HowlRound, hi HowlRound. <laughs> We'll be streaming our plenary sessions and featuring the SL interpreters in their own little spotlight box. Um, in addition to providing live captioning, so if you have folks at home who want to tune in, you can let them know that. Um, and this is because they are awesome, so we thank them uh, with our whole hearts. Um, we are also providing space for nursing moms at the conference. Hey, nursing moms. And all moms, really. So new moms. Um, so the Carnegie Room, which is right near our registration desk, um, is going to serve as a new mother's room for the duration of the conference. If you'd like to use the room, it is key activated, so you can have privacy in there if you want. So you can see a TCG staff member at registration, or you can find a member of the conference team, maybe these two members of the conference team, we can help you out. Um, finally, kids at conference sessions. We love kids. Any kids ages 11 to 17 are welcome in the plenary sessions, provided that they register. So please check them in on your way into the session at our registration desk. Um, and now I'm going to shut up, and I'm going to let Salma step up and talk a little bit about our um, observance of Ramadan here at the conference. Hello, everyone. Just want to say hi. Just want to say happy Ramadan to everyone who is actually observing Ramadan and have the strength to fast throughout this whole process. Um, my heart goes with you. Like I tried. Uh, <laughs> um, so, um, part of TCG's uh, mission is to include all communities, and of course, the Muslim community is not a small one when it comes to theater and it comes to America. Um, so. They, we have specified a, like, a couple of rooms for certain windows of time for those who are praying. Um, so, and also, those rooms could be used for those who are not going to be able to have lunch and just need 20 minutes to just rest their eyes because there's no caffeine. Uh, <laughs> so, um, so these are the rooms. So today, um, for the Doha prayer, we have meeting room one set from 1 to 1.30 p.m., and for the Oster prayer, we have one for same meeting room one from five to five thirty. As for tomorrow, we have um, meeting room one for Doher prayer from one to one thirty. And for the Oster prayer, we're going to have a room set from four p.m. until six p.m. So this is also a good time to like rest or pray or just if you want to take your time and away from everyone, do it. Um, it's going to be at the Lafayette room. It's going to be by registration. As for Saturday. Um, same, meeting room one from 1 to 1.30 for Doher prayer and 5 to 5.30 for Oster prayer. And that's pretty much it. You guys keep going and fasting if you can. <laughs> um, if you have any questions about that, please come to me or Hannah or anyone else at registration. The TCG staff has the information on hand. Thank you. Thanks, Alma. And I'm going I'm to hand it off to Devin and some of our very special guests to take you through the agenda. Okay, now is the time when we welcome our conference pros. We've identified some, uh, some old friends who are going to take us through some pieces of your agenda and uh, make some cameos to, uh, to talk about them for a minute. Um, so first, I'm going to welcome up my, actually my teammate, Natalie Stringer. Natalie's going to talk to you about trend workshops. 
Hey y'all, so for people who are new, Trend Workshops are sessions led by our wonderful business affiliates and sponsors who are here exhibiting at the conference. You may have seen some of them at their tables. Um, they are 60 minute sessions and they are today only, so you wanna make sure to take advantage of them if you can. They're actually going to be in two different rounds. So there are about five or six sessions happening right at three o'clock following this session from three to four, and then another round from 4.15 to 5.15, um, and the range is spectacular anywhere from topics of, of subscription models and, and cultivating donors to um, how and and uh, like it, to what extent do you design theaters and um, looping in mobile apps and digital marketing and so it's a really full uh, it's part of the full conference experience so take advantage of it if you can thanks Nat okay uh, Hannah's gonna run the mic around to our other cameos where's Lisa Mount She's going to tell us about some skills oh, building. <laughs> yeah, well, it's because I can't turn my back to the front rows. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. I'm talking about skills building sessions, which are happening tomorrow for three hours from 1030 till noon and then resuming after lunch from 1.30 until 3. My fabulous colleague, Christine Chopiak, and I will be leading the visual strategic planning uh, pro tip. If you want the swag, get there early. Um, there are a really amazing array of skills building workshops, which you will find on the app and in your program. I encourage you to dive deep. But here's the catch. You got to go to the whole thing. Don't show up for the first half and then not come back for the second half. We might not hand out the swag until the end. Okay, Rachel Grossman, would you tell us about some dine around opportunities? I would love to. Thank you all for coming to Washington, D.C. I'm here to tell you about dine arounds. They're happening on Friday night. What's a dine around? <laughs> it involves eating. This is gonna be longer than 30 seconds. All right, uh, it's curated by, uh, it's, it's a casually curated group conversation around a variety of topics. Uh, some of them, uh, I can't read my own writing, uh, and some of them are pre prepared with theatrical performances. Um, they occur throughout DC. They are hosted by a range of theatrical practitioners from a range of DC metropolitan theaters. They all start at 6.15, asterisk. Uh, and the way that I mean they start is that you would meet your hosts right by registration. And now we go to the asterisk, except for one, which starts at 5.30. <laughs> you should go to a dine around. You will find all the information about the dine arounds in Conference 2.0, where you will see which one starts at 5.30. <laughs> you will also sign up. There are caps to many of these because we had to make reservations, and DC restaurants suck about reservations. So please sign up. If you have signed up and you're like, meh, I'm not gonna go anymore, unsign up because there are caps. And then we'll, you're taking somebody else's spot, and that sucks. Um, so uh, if you are going to a show that's paired with a dine around, please get your ticket, OK? There's been some confusion about that, but please get your ticket. Also, you have to pay for your own dinner. Um, that's why it says fee required. Um, last, there are lots of discounts. So if you're not going to a dine around, there's lots of discounts for um, shows throughout DC, which you can find on the TCG website or by visiting the Theater Washington table, uh, DC Theater table right outside. Okay, I think that's all I'm supposed to say, right? Cool. Thanks, Rachel. So we're excited to bring up Maurice to call uh, TCG's very first artist in residence to tell us about lunch salons. Hello, everyone. It's uh, great to be here with you. Great to uh, have an opportunity to uh, speak with you. So tomorrow and Saturday, we have the lunch salons. They run from 12.15 to 1.15. Uh, yeah, you know, look, at the, look for those things on Conference 2.0. Show up. They should be great. Uh, tomorrow, we're going to be running one uh, specifically looking at uh, community engagement in military and veterans communities. So if you're interested in forming relationships or forming deeper relationships, come to that. The theaters that are involved uh, La Jolla Playhouse, The Old Globe, um, Trinity Rep, and Cape Fear Regional Theater will all be in, con in conversation together. And we're going to talk about ways to reach out and uh, ways to uh, you know, deepen that engagement if you're already doing that sort of work. So that's tomorrow. Come to that at 1215. 
Actually, you don't have to come with that. Go to one of those tomorrow, 12.15, and also uh, Saturday, 12.15. Are we good? Oh, yeah, and also, they made me say this. You can bring lunch to this. You can actually, like, bring lunch. It's, you can bring your food with you. So, you know, that's, that's fun, I guess. <laughs> I just wanted to also add that lunch will be available on both meeting floors. So if you're already upstairs and you're going to stay upstairs for your session, there should be some lunch available for you. But if you plan on wandering, you probably want to come downstairs. Most of the lunch will be down here. If you have special dietary restrictions, the lunches will be down here for you. And uh, we were going to pass this to Caridad to talk about bookstore sessions, but Caridad's not here. She's joining us tomorrow, Caridad Spitch. She is going to be sitting in one of our uh, many bookstore sessions that we have over the course of the conference on Saturday, talking about our new audience revolution, uh, Dispatches from the Field book with Larissa Fasthorse. But uh, that is actually our last bookstore session. Our first bookstore session is at 3 p.m. today. We're doing a documentary screening of something called The Penelope Project, led by Sojourn Theatre Company. And uh, Victor Vasquez, I believe, from um, Pasadena Playhouse is going to be uh, in discussion about that film. And there will be uh, pretty much books attached to every bookstore session, which is why they're in the bookstore. There's a lot of book signings. There's a lot of screenings and discussions. And the schedule for that is in your conference booklet in an insert. It's also all on 2.0. So I think Elena, who I keep losing, is going <laughs> to talk, <laughs> talk about the ground at 20 for us for a minute. And I'll give you my mic. Thank you. Before I go into the ground at 20 really quickly, I want to give a shout out to uh, Lisa Mount. You said something about swag. I feel like there are some German markers of swag. Uh, also, Rachel uh, Dinerounds. Did you say cats or caps? Caps. Caps. OK. Well, I mean, either way, they're great. <laughs> so uh, uh, um, <laughs> a programming arc that I am very excited and really uh, honored to have been working on is something called The Ground at 20. You'll see in your program booklets uh, to celebrate the 20th anniversary of August Wilson's seminal remarks at a national conference in the past, we're hosting something called The Ground at 20. And it's an arc to celebrate the legacies of veteran theater veteran leaders of theaters of color. And over the next two days, beginning tomorrow, there's going to be some awesome intergenerational conversations that will also be taped. So just to give you a taste of what to expect, uh, we have some branding here. The Ground at 20, Independence and Reciprocity. LATC, can I get a show of hands really quickly? LATC, all right, all right. Uh, Ground at 20, John O'Neill, Free Southern Theater, and Junebug Productions. This is also aligning with some bookstore programming that we have. And then moving into uh, the final parts of Saturday, the Ground at 20, a forward stance with Jorge Ortol, Mayi Theater Company, interviewed by Snehal Desai. Um, Saturday, to close the arc out, we have the Ground at 20, a conversation, Native Voices at the Autry. And then, uh, let's see, Ground at 20, Middle East to center stage. Uh, so that will be 12.15 to 1.15, but you'll find the details of everything on Conference 2.0. So I really hope that you all will be able to check out one, maybe two, or all of the lovely Ground at 20 arc sessions. Great. Um, and I'm also going to add to that that you can find those Ground at 20 sessions in your insert. So if you are a hard copy paper person, that's where you can find those. Um, and I'm going to step in here briefly and talk about professional affinity groups, which all happen on Friday evening at 445. So you'll all be in a mad rush to find your people at 445 tomorrow. Um, if you're unfamiliar with those, those are spaces where you can be with your colleagues of similar professional identity. So we have groups of marketing directors and associate artistic directors and students and university leaders and development staff, and they're all facilitated by one or multiple of your friends and colleagues. Um, so those are safe spaces where you can be in the room and bring up issues that are sort of generating heat for you and your professional lives. Um, so check those out. If those conversations are really cruising for you, that's why we put them at the end of the day on Friday. So go get a beer and keep talking, or whatever, your, your, po your poison. Um, so I'm going to pass it off now to to me, yes. because when you give a, a theater person 30 seconds, it means at least two minutes. <laughs> so <laughs> we are, if you have a question about Conference 2.0, you're doomed, because there's no time to talk about it. No, uh, talk to registration. They have a lot of knowledge. They can email folks who are experts. We will get you uh, going on to Conference 2.0 if you need it. 
Um, and of course, any questions or answers, questions that you have, please ask the Carmen staff. We're gonna move into at the intersections now, so I'm hoping Carmen come up on the stage and join us. Um, very briefly, this grew out of the need for uh, people from marginalized communities who were at the national conference to come together in affinity space and have the kinds of conversations that could only happen in those spaces. That was happening for many, many, many years before TCG realized that that needed to be something we put a lot of intentionality around. Um, in 2014 in San Diego, we got a lot more serious about it uh, and we learned a lot of lessons about how to communicate the values of at the intersections and the process of, uh, of at the intersections. And Cleveland, I think, went a little better. Um, we're going to do that again now. Um, and I'm gonna turn it over to Carmen to talk about what we mean when we mean affinity space, what we mean by ally inclusive. Um, but just to give the broad overall arc, we're gonna begin together here. We're gonna end at how we move forward. And in between, we're gonna be meeting in at the intersections of identity, of race, gender, disability, um, national identity. Um, and so I'm gonna turn it over now to Carmen. Okay, thank you, Gus. Um, so uh, we have come a long way since San Diego. Um, how many of you were at the San Diego uh, conference? Yeah, when we uh, launched affinity groups for the first time. Wonderful. Um, I just wanna uh, give a little bit of a, a framework um, background and uh, intentional thinking behind these affinity spaces. Uh, because there are oftentimes confusions uh, around it. Uh, people are wondering and questioning, que questioning, why do we have to separate ourselves? It seems divisive, it seems problematic. And I just want to offer to you um, some thoughts in the tradition and history of community organizing, doing social justice work that might be helpful. Uh, we don't have affinity space to be divisive and to separate people. Uh, we have affinity space because it is often helpful for those individuals who have been historically pushed to the margins to have a for us, by us space where their voices can be centered. Uh, and that's helpful in the service of coming back together again in community across identity areas and differences in solidarity uh, to ultimately build the beloved community. Uh, so affinity spaces are strategic. They help us to clarify uh, the ways in which we might need support from one another, the ways in which we might need support from others without any distractions. Uh, I think the other thing I'd like to say that affinity groups are also wonderful spaces for allies who want to support um, folks who have been historically pushed to the margins. Um, and allies meet in affinity spaces, not so much to talk about the ways that they have privilege and they've been left out of the other affinity groups, but to support from a place of privilege um, uh, equalizing and sharing power. Does that make sense to folks? Okay. Do, if it does make sense to you, I need you to really nod your head vigorously. Okay, thank you, thank you. And I can see that it does not make sense to some of you. So. Uh, because you're not nodding your heads, I, you could, you're reflecting, and I think that's fine. Uh, so I'm just going to continue a little bit further. Um, the other thing uh, that I want to say about um, affinity spaces, here at this conference, the way that we are using them, again, intentionally to bring communities together so that we can be better um, uh, agents of change across differences. Some of these spaces are uh, not open to allies, and by that we mean they are only reserved for individuals who identify as a member of that group. So we invite you, if you identify as a member of that group, to be a part of that affinity space. If you don't identify as a member of that group uh, and you, uh, it's not open to you, we really are trusting that you'll honor that. Um, and if you um, have never identified, identified in a particular way before um, and you come to the conference and you're wondering, hmm, I think now I am such and so, don't, don't do that. If you have historically never identified that way, do not use this as an opportunity for the, to, for the very first time, change your racial identi identity or your gender identity or your sexual orientation. We'd like to encourage you to really speak your truth, um, but again, define yourself for yourself. Um, the last thing I'm gonna say about this, uh, two, two, two points. If you are an ally, and we do have spaces open to allies, um, and you are invited to come into that space, 
we're really going to ask you to um, show up in that space from a place of support. And so just be mindful about how much space you're taking up. And I'm, you know, I'm going to be really particular here because uh, we did get some feedback from, well, quite frankly, we got some feedback last year that one of the affinity spaces that was open to allies uh, was attended by allies, and then some of them, I know it wasn't intentional, but they took up a lot of space, and a lot of the inquiries were, well, we want to learn more about you people. We want to learn, please don't do that. Please don't do that. We know um, that that curiosity and that interest really comes from a place of support, but uh, when you're on the receiving end of it, sometimes it feels hostile. So just want to support them. Um, so just be mindful. And then the other, the last thing I want to say, if after all of this, you're still troubled and worried about affinity spaces, the political ideology underpinning affinity spaces, and you feel that it's really problematic, I want to invite you to take all of that and speak to one Gus Schulenberg. <laughs> Mic drop. <laughs> All right, moving right along. Uh, I want to take this time now, uh, we're going to take some space for special cameo section to hear from folks that are actually leading some of these sessions. So uh, can I invite up here, again, I'm actually going to put the timer on so you all have 30 seconds. Um, Chantal Rodriguez, uh, Latin X session. Thank you. Hi, good afternoon. Um, I will be leading the Latinx Affinity Group session with Alex Meda, Artistic Director of Teatro Luna. Uh, we will be holding space for reflection about the tragedy in Orlando and doing an activity around that. Uh, we will be doing a speed dating sort of get to know you session. Uh, in, in San Diego, we only had time to introduce ourselves and then the session was over. So we're doing a speed dating session. Uh, and then we're gonna have sort of a larger group discussion about how do we deepen community and leverage our collective power. Um, so we, this session is open to allies uh, and we invite you to join us. Thank you. Fantastic. Okay, and next we have Emilio Cachapiro, Director of Artistic and International Programs here at TCG. Uh, don't start the timer yet. Um, <laughs> I just as of yesterday, a lot of you were at the pre-conference, and I just wanted to acknowledge uh, that we have colleagues here from uh, more than 25 countries around the world, delegation from Colombia, from Sweden, from Korea, from the UK, uh, Zimbabwe, uh, and I just want to have you extend a special welcome to those folks uh, who may not understand all of the quirks and the jargon that we have in our world. Uh, so please Please be generous in that way. Uh, a couple of things now that I am being timed on. Uh, uh, later on today at 4.45 is the Intergenerational Leaders of Color uh, Affinity Group, that, a tradition that's been going on for years now. It is an affinity-only space. Uh, and Elena and I will be co-facilitating that along with our rising leaders of color. Uh, and then on Saturday morning, and that's uh, 4.45, uh, and then at Saturday morning breakfast, early, 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 uh, 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. is the Theaters of Color breakfast. Uh, and that's specifically for those working in and with uh, theaters of color, and that's going to be co-facilitated by Leslie Ishii at East West, Players in L.A., and Marshall Jones at Crossroads. Uh, so that's it. Handing it Fantastic, that was 45 seconds, great. Um, let's see, <laughs> can we have Nigel Porter and for the queer movement building session? All right now. And <laughs> Thank you, Hannah. I feel like I'm on the prices right. <laughs> How's everyone? <laughs> oh, I can stay here. Okay, great. Uh, I, along with Lisa Mount, who you heard earlier, are leading the queer movement building session. Um, this is an allied open space, uh, and it's an opportunity for those um, who fall under the umbrella of queer, uh, under the queer identity, to come together and create some solutions and actions around issues that we may face in our theaters every day. It's happening tomorrow at 1215, and I hope to see some of you there. Great. Thank you. Okay, and now we have some friends for our Deaf Culture session. We have Kala. 
Okay, hello everyone. My name is Kala. I uh, just graduated from Gallaudet University. I walk, work with Dog and Pony DC, um, and we host ASL pickup sessions at Argonaut, which is a bar in DC that you can come to. Um, and we've also brought our ASL pickup sessions here to Theater Nation. Um, and also the deaf and artist, deaf artists and hearing artists sessions working together. So that's what we have in store for you. Thank you. And we have SK and Lisa for a gender session. We have. And Ty, oh Lord, okay, 30 seconds. I can do this fast. Um, so I'm Lisa, this is SK and Ty. We are going to be leading the calling in and calling on trans, gender non-conforming, non-binary, and two-spirit solidarity in action. So really what that's about is thinking about how do we activate um, personal solidarity and turning that into organizational solidarity for creating trans-inclusive theaters. Um, Cool. Yes. Wow. That was like 10.5 seconds. Let's take a breath really quickly, all right? Because we bought some time, a few seconds. We also just want to say that allies are welcome and encouraged in this session. If you identify as cisgender, if you identify as transgender, this session you are welcome at. Thank you. Okay, and finally, uh, to speak a little bit about our national identity session, we have Kita Sullivan. Good afternoon, okay. I'm actually talking for uh, Rihanna Yazi, who I don't, don't think has made it yet. Um, on Saturday, there is a session uh, reframing the narrative of sovereignty. Um, that session is focusing on indigenous, First Nations, Native American issues through the frame of sovereignty and what are our really realities, um, and working toward new national identities centered around justice and equity for Native communities. And I'm also gonna plug my session, uh, which is right after this, um, talking about red face. Thank you. All right, uh, and now I wanna take a moment to invite up Kanisha Foster. Hey, I'm, uh, I'm gonna read from a phone because I'm so 2016, it'll <laughs> blow your mind. Um, I'm, I'm gonna ask some people that are gonna speak with me to come up as I introduce. So if you could come up now to the stage, Nelson, Jojo, Carmen, Hannah, and David S. if you'd like to come, you're invited to come up too. So uh, I've been part of the conversation around um, affinity groups and identity from the beginning and very uh, welcome to be. I'm a mixed race, black, white woman, um, and I'll be leading the mixed race conversation. And last year, I was so rebelliously um, thrilled <laughs> to hear about all of the action that people wanted to take. So in the moment, as we closed out last year, I asked people if they would tweet out one thing they were dedicated to doing this year so that they could be held to that action. And I'm so thrilled to hear that people across the board have made incredible things happen, either from that moment or because they saw others dedicated to that moment kept making things happen. And these are just a few of the people who did that, so I'm gonna let them talk about it. Sure. Hi, I'm Nelson Eusebio. I'm uh, co-curating co the uh, API affinity space on Beyond Orientalism, uh, which happens after this with Mina Morita of Crowded Fire. Uh, last year when Kanisha challenged us to do this, I tweeted out that I would vow to eradicate um, yellow face from the American theater, uh, <laughs> which is laughable, yes, but this year we launched a national movement called Beyond Orientalism that is dedicated to eradicating this. Hi, I'm Joe Roof. For the moment, I uh, was the coordinating producer, or one of the two, for the Women's Voices Theater Festival. Um, and in Cleveland, there was a lot of talk about gender parity. And right here in DC, last fall, um, we did the Women's Voices Theater Festival, which was two months involving nearly 50 theaters across the DC area, doing world premieres by 56 female playwrights. So it was very exciting. Um, and a cool opportunity to celebrate as we are thrilled to host all of thousand people, a thousand plus people here this weekend, so. Hi, and I'm here to plug the Practicing Arts Activism session. Is Carol McCord here? Carol? Well, Carol's here um, in the hotel. She may not be in the room. Um, so I wanna plug this. I, if, you were, if you're familiar with the uh, recent meeting that took place at the NEA on April the uh, 26th that then turned into an interesting internet um, uh, mandate that ultimately resulted in the um, transition of uh, an executive director at a very large art service organization. 
Um, Carol was uh, the person who lit the match that um, started that. <laughs> that was the, um, it was the blog uh, read around the internet. Um, we're gonna have an interview with her about that to talk about what lessons we can learn from that moment at the NEA with that situation. There are some ways that we feel that it's, uh, that it's, it's, it's an interesting statement on the field and where we're at right now, and also an interesting statement on what we expect from people in leadership positions. Uh, and then lastly, it's a really interesting, powerful statement on the ways in which white allies in leadership positions are really using their power. So we wanna, we're gonna have that conversation. It's happening on, uh, I'm sorry, I was told I could, I could plug this. Um, <laughs> it, it's happening Friday at 10.30. It is not in your normal thing. It's in the uh, addendum sheet thing. Hey, so, um, and I'm here to speak briefly about another recently added uh, session that is connected to, but not entirely um, based around um, a movement that is a very recent sort of presence um, in many of our communities, but particularly in the Chicago community, um, the Not In Our House movement, supporting um, folks who have been oppressed by gender-based violence um, in our theaters on stage and off. Um, and I encourage you, we've got a, a, a team of facilitators um, who are building, some of you I haven't even met yet, but I know many things about your incredible gender analysis. Um, and so I'm excited to sort of support this conversation um, and start thinking about strategies to really um, dismantle this stuff. So, yeah. One more quick thing. Yep. And I just want to say thank you so much. If others took action in that moment, come find me throughout the conference. I really want to hear what you've been doing this year. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Okay, we're over time, and we know everyone has sessions to get to, but we've been moving very fast. And of all people in this room, I can acknowledge the importance of breath when bringing new things into the world. So we're going to we're gonna take a breath together, and then we're going to send you on your way. OK? So just inhale and exhale with me. Enjoy yourselves. <laughs>